Hello everyone, it's me Bryson P. Welcome to another video, and today we're going to be checking out a new channel. This will be my first time reacting to them. It is Weird History, and this video is What Was Life Like for the Average Viking? It's my first video in regards to Vikings. As I've said, I am interested in the culture of who they were, what they were, and kind of just the actual culture and history about them. So I will have more to come in the future when it comes to Vikings. However, this um, will hopefully be a good start for us. I would like to also say I do have a postcard from Germany and it has a word search on it so i'm getting that taken care of and completed and i will post the picture of it on my facebook and instagram so you could check that out there and then i've got a package from denmark as well and i will be getting that opened and hopefully creating a video getting that posted here soon as well i'm kind of running behind i've been really busy at work and i've had to work some extra and, and do some things in the afternoons as well so i'm um, not so much on my schedule as I like to be, but it's okay. We're getting caught back up. Let's get into it and find out what the average life or the average day of a Viking would be. Here we go. We've all seen Vikings on television and in movies, but popular depictions of this ancient culture are often more fantasy than they are history. A Viking man was likely to be a farmer by day while his wife was in charge of the household and the family. At night, they slept in one big room with the whole family and, most likely, their goats. Probably not what most people picture when they hear the word Vikings. Today, we're going to take a look at the bizarre aspects of everyday life in ancient Viking culture. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe. And I would like to also let you guys know, I have not seen a single episode of the TV show Game of Thrones. I've not seen a single one of those, so I, I'm not in any way familiar with that. So, here we go. Let's watch the non-Minnesota Vikings. Viking culture was absolutely brutal. They loved to pillage their enemies, and the spoils of that pillaging included prisoners who would be returned to Scandinavia and sold as slaves, which were known as thralls. Viking warriors would sail around Europe, raiding lands from Spain to Byzantium. Along the way, they would traffic prisoners, particularly women, in an elaborate slavery network. Archaeological evidence has turned up numerous iron slave collars and even suggested the existence of forced labor plantations in Sweden. And if that's not scary enough, they were also really into sacrifice of their fellow man. Mass burial sites have been discovered across Scandinavia that seem to back up the accounts of Christian chroniclers who reported atrocities carried out in the name of gods. No wonder everyone was so terrified of being raided by Vikings. So we had human sacrifices. So I gotta find out like how much of this stuff would actually be true. It all sounds great. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in any way dissing it. I just, I, I gotta. There's definitely so much to it that I would have to learn. So much to it that I need to to learn that, that you know, it's interesting to know about history like that. I don't know if he's going to talk about it or not because we are just now getting started into it, and this is only going to be the second one. But I am familiar and aware that. Uh, the Vikings were more pagan, so I am familiar with that. <laughs> While it's just a myth that Vikings wore horns, the legendary Viking funeral was a real thing. Now the horns, that's why I wore my shirt here, because I do sometimes pick my shirts out to kind of go with a video. So I was aware before he mentioned it that the actual Vikings did not have horns on them, so I chose my, to wear my warrior dash shirt so that way just just for the sole sake of this warriors of renown would have their bodies placed on a ship that could range in size from a tiny rowboat to a massive warship the ship would be stocked with so-called grave goods which were important items the deceased would need in the afterlife these items might include jewels animals weapons and most terrifyingly living slaves who belong to the deceased once loaded up the boat while probably still on land, would be set on fire, sending the warrior off in a literal blaze of glory. While most who received this honor were hold on, sending hold on. the warrior living slaves who belonged to the deceased. So what you're saying is belong to the deceased. <clears throat> Once loaded up, the boat, while probably still on land, would be set on fire, sending the warrior off in a literal blaze of glory. So the living slaves to the deceased would be on the boat and would be set on fire along with the boat as well, so they would be burned alive. Is that, that's how I'm understanding this. 
While most who received this honor were men, it's definitely worth noting that quite a few women received it as well. In the 10th century, a writer named Ahmed ibn Fadlan witnessed a funeral that was much like one of these ship burials. He wrote that in the case of rich people of status, a third of their wealth was inherited by their family, another third would pay for their funeral clothes, and the last third went to buying alcoholic drinks that would be served at the cremation. A no party like a Viking funeral alcoholic so, drinks. So is that one of the slaves right there that we're depicting? That would be served at the cremation. A no party like a Viking funeral party. You probably knew this already, but no. Scandinavia can get quite cold oh. during the winter. Well, yeah. This causes the ground to freeze over and makes getting around tricky. But when your day-to-day -day life requires hunting, like it often did for Vikings, you can't let a little ice slow you down. So how did the Vikings deal with it? Well, archaeologists suggest they simply slid over the ice. This is backed up by over 100 pine wood skis that were found preserved in bogs. Worth noting, no Viking lift ticket has ever been found. Ever I've never thought about that. You know, like you think about the Viking ships and you think, okay, my thought if you asked about travel and of course the ships, but then I would say snowshoes and, and dog sleds, but I wouldn't have thought skiing. Evidence also shows the Vikings used ice skates made from the bones of moose or horses, and wooden sleighs have been found in the graves of high-status Viking women. Reverse mullets? So one of the things Vikings are not known for is their hairstyles, and there might be a reason for that. Namely, the Vikings wore reverse mullets. Yes, when they first arrived in England, locals couldn't help but notice the party in the front, business in the back hairstyle the newcomers sported. The hairstyle became pretty unpopular, particularly with the church, and it would be worn again in subsequent generations by Norman invaders who descended from the Vikings. That's kind of how mine is if I was trying to grow it out like that, which I mean, I guess in a way I maybe am, but if I really like bring it all to where it goes, it's kind of like that. I'm kind of getting there a little bit. Maybe. So I'm going to keep letting it grow out. I don't know how long I'm going to let it grow out to, but I'm going to keep letting it grow out, and we'll just see how far it really grows. So we'll see. We'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments. How about that? Oh, wait. Humans and animals live together in one room. Yeah, I mean, that that is understandable. That isn't necessarily just a Vikings thing, I would say. That's been pretty well common I mean, even the Amish people do it from time to time, even. Uh, it's not. <clears throat> Viking houses were just one big room, and a Viking family was likely to share their living space with their animals. While some houses were built with two rooms, likely to spare the occupants from having to be trampled by goats while they slept, these tended to belong to wealthier members of society. As time went on and Viking culture progressed, Wealthier Vikings got increasingly larger homes with more and more space. These homes could comfortably accommodate the people, livestock, and food that all needed to be sheltered. The largest room in such structures was called the longhouse. Those are neat. I like the way that those are designed. Those are, uh, I, the longhouse, those are neat. I've never seen anything like it, so, you know, to see it in person would be really cool. It would typically have a hearth and a cooking pit and be used as a hall. Viking women could be chiefs or great warriors, but most weren't. With a typical Viking man out working the farm all day, the typical woman was charged with running her household, which included keeping the larder stocked, weaving, mending sails, and just generally being the boss of the family. Viking women did not have it easy. A wife's adultery was considered an extremely serious matter, and in some areas a Viking man who caught his wife cheating on him might be legally entitled to dispatch both his wife and her lover. Conversely, men were permitted to keep concubines or even have children outside of their marriage. A practice so widespread, some early Christian observers mistook the Vikings for being polygamous. However, the women did have some rights. Viking women were allowed to divorce their husbands if they wanted to in a surprisingly simple legal process. Evidence shows that this seldom used procedure merely involved calling together a group of witnesses and declaring oneself divorced. Well, it could be a little more complicated if the ownership of property... Well, that sure seems awfully easy compared to how some divorces are today. You know, there's many divorces that cost thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. My divorce, personally, I think it was like $500. That was it. That's how much it cost for everything 
for our child custody, for our divorce decree, everything out the box and everything was 500 bucks to have it completely done and to have our marriage completely resolved. Involved, its mere existence is fairly remarkable. I played a lot of chess. I did not know that either. For leisure, Viking men and women played a game called Nefetafel. Nefetafel was a Germanic strategy game, not unlike chess, that is believed to have evolved from an earlier Roman game. They also enjoyed regular chess. The British Museum has a famous 12th century Norwegian chess set known as the Lewis Chessmen. That's really neat. You guys want to know where I learned how to play chess? So, for a long, many years, um, especially like my later high school, early adulthood, I wanted to learn how to play chess. I've always had an interest in it, I thought it was neat just because of the different pieces. And I really didn't know anything about it. Had no clue, really, other than, like, some names. You know, king, queen, and, you know, bishop, things like that. But I didn't know what they did. Didn't, I couldn't tell you anything about chess. Whenever I got incarcerated and spent some time in what I call adult time out, you know, during that time, um, I, I, of course, had nothing better to do but to learn how to play chess. And so I was, I watched a lot of people and then I kind of slowly started working my way into it and learning what it really was and how the pieces moved and, and I learned how to play chess. And then it turned into, I was playing it for hours upon hours upon hours a day. It'd be two, three o'clock in the morning and I'd be playing chess. So, and then whenever I was, um, released and no longer incarcerated, I went and of course bought a really nice little wooden chess set and played it quite a bit. Now, I've not played chess in a few years, but uh, it would be neat to play chess again and, and you know, to have somebody. I don't have anybody to play chess with. Uh, I used to have an app on my phone and play it on, on computerized versions, but this is not as fun as playing it actually in person with somebody leisurely and just having a good time. Maybe I can play chess with somebody whenever I visit there next year since it appears that maybe you guys are still big chess players. Consisting of pieces carved from walrus ivory and whale teeth. It is one of the few nearly complete medieval chess sets known to exist today. Nefetafel is so much part of Viking culture and history, it often appeared in Norse sagas, being played by heroes and kings. For example, the saga of King Olaf the Saint. This poem tells the tale of a match between two real historical figures, Nut the Great, who was king of England, Norway, and Denmark, and one of his nobles, a man named Ulf. Vikings were not illiterate. In fact, they could write using a runic alphabet called Fathark. Known to be used by both men and women, Fathark was made up of 24 letters and could be used to write out several Germanic languages. Interestingly, Fathark runes have been found carved into stones throughout Northern Europe. Archaeologists believe this practice may have had mystical purposes. Like all cultures, Vikings loved to hear stories. They even had professional entertainers called skalds. Much skalds. like the oral poets of ancient Greece, the skalds would memorize long tales and recite them aloud around a fire or in a hall. These tales were fun and enjoyable, but they also served to educate younger generations about Viking culture, faith, and history. I mean, we have that now, even without just the Vikings themselves. You know, you gather around a campfire, <coughs> especially this time of the year whenever the nights start to cool off and it's only in the 50s and 60s at night and, and you know the the leaves start to change colors like i said the autumn time is the time around here you start telling ghost stories or you start telling you go camping over the weekend and you just have a good time you know you go out and enjoy the wilderness for the 48 hours you have off before you go back to work and just you know you sit around the campfire at night and those are some really good life lessons. You know, you can really learn a lot in those moments. It's neat. It's been a long time since I've done something like that too. Skalds were especially known to be associated with royal courts. In such a setting, it is believed that they told tales honoring their monarchs by placing them in legendary genealogies. Thanks to an old Norse book known as the Skaldatal, we know the names of 300 of these skalds from the period between 800 and 1200 AD. Their poems were replete with literary devices called kennings. Kennings are short phrases that would supply necessary imagery without requiring the poet to repeat himself. 
For example, instead of saying death, the poet might refer to the sleep of the sword. As an interesting side note, a 13th century Icelandic scholar named Snorri Sturluson wrote a textbook aimed at teaching his readers the meaning behind these skaldic kennings. Since understanding many of the kennings required knowing Norse myths, Snorri recorded the myths as well. Much of what we know of Norse mythology today was only preserved due to Snorri's writings. They ate horse and reindeer. Well, I've ra ate reindeer too now. Evidence shows that all Vikings, pretty much regardless of social status, had a protein-heavy diet. In fact, during the Middle Ages, even my boss at work has ate reindeer now because I did take my reindeer sausage that was sent to me from Norway. I did take it to work and I let my boss try it. So he enjoyed it and said it was very good as well. Even the poorest Viking ate better than your average English peasant. A typical Viking family would eat twice a day, once when they awoke and again after the day's work was done. Meat was a regular part of their meals, including goat, reindeer, elk, lamb, beef, mutton, horse. Pigs were raised on farms and estates alike, and pork was especially popular. Most of the meat dishes Vikings enjoyed were boiled. One, called scows, is known to have been a hearty stew, enjoyed with bread, baked from beans, grain, and tree bark. For a seagoing people, tree bark. it's not surprising that fish was also a major staple. Herring was widely consumed and might be prepared in a number of different ways, including pickled, dried, salted, or smoked. In fact, it was fairly well-rounded and included both fruits and vegetables. Evidence shows they ate carrots, beans, cabbage, and apples. They were also known to use herbs and spices, so they ate food, but I understand it's. I mean, it's more specific to their region and, and the way that they ate because obviously, you know, I'm just I'm just being facetious at the moment. Like cumin, <coughs> mustard, coriander, and horseradish to punch up bland food. Despite the hearty diet, Vikings still faced a few health problems. For one, archaeological digs into Viking sewers and cesspools have shown that many Vikings had intestinal parasites. As if that didn't give them indigestion enough. The same evidence shows that Viking bread was prone to being baked with seeds from weeds that are poisonous to humans. Oops, Viking office Greg does not like this. That's not good. I don't know, I mean, I guess, I'm sure none of you guys have like a, it's not like a reason, but I would think maybe it was just lack of knowledge and lack of understanding at that time of the seeds just being poisonous. I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure, but you would think maybe if it was making you sick, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm looking too far into it here. I think they get drunk on their own mead. These days we all love a good beer, but Vikings were more into a forerunner of beer called mead, which was made by fermenting water, honey, and yeast. It was popular at feasts and was believed to inspire great poetry. Mead was so culturally influential that Norse myths actually feature a character called Hedrun, who is a magical goat that produces mead instead of milk. I like a good mead. I had a friend that worked with in Arkansas who actually turned me on to the mead. Uh, we, he had brought some for me to try because we had talked it up and, and, and made it sound really good. So I had tried it and it was very good. Very good. I enjoyed it. And I've not had any since, but what the mead I have tried... I enjoyed. Vikings loved to party, and their feasts were epic celebrations overflowing with food. A feast would typically be held in a massive longhouse and be hosted by someone important, like a local chief or king. The event was typically in honor of some occasion like a harvest festival or a religious ritual, but could also be for a personal occasion like a wedding, baby birth, or even a successful raid. While the food at these feasts was important, that wasn't the real point. The feasts were really an opportunity to fortify social relationships in a positive way. Of course. Leaders and their subordinates could bond, political roles could be reinforced, and alliances could be formed. Of all course. of which was crucial to holding together Viking society and culture. Of course. How would you handle life as a Viking? Let us know in the comments below and while- Okay, so that was the first look at weird history and what was the average life like for a Viking. The average day for a Viking. Pretty interesting. I definitely had a lot of questions and things that I knew already, but also a lot of things that struck me or a lot of things that I just didn't understand or, or just kind of not normal, wasn't expecting. So I, I feel like I had some good questions to this, and I would definitely be needing to follow up and learn more about the Vikings. Definitely watch more, some different channels, and check out different uh, 
content creators so that way i can also get not just a one-sided view on the vikings obviously like i say with multiple other things you know rather it be economics or politics culture so we definitely have a long way to go but we have plenty of time for it and i'm excited to continue let me know what you think and let me know how it, how true this is but also let me know if there's any other viking videos and what other viking type of videos culture and history that i should check out and look into possibly react to as well so i hope you enjoyed this and have a great day great night whatever time it is that you see this it's me price and p goodbye